The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. You know, we need to develop that attitude of what do we have if God doesn't help us? What are we except for the grace of God? What are we except for God's goodness in our lives? We're nothing, absolutely nothing. We deserve nothing. And every good thing that happens to us is a gift from God. And we need to celebrate God's goodness. I wonder what you have in your life right now that at one time you were amazed by and so excited about that now has become the very thing that you grouch about all the time. You remember that child that you grouch about now, how sweet that thing was when it popped out? <laughs> and how long you believed God for that baby? Come on, ladies, some of you remember how long you prayed for that husband you got now? <laughs> and even those of you that, you know, you're just griping about your job and all the responsibility, you remember praying for that promotion? You remember praying that God would put you in leadership? I remember praying for everything I've got right now. I remember. I remember one time when I was driving in my car and I was asking God to do all this stuff and you know, back then, I, don't know, I was just only getting just to teach some little Bible studies here and there. And I said, oh, God, please, someday, I just I want to travel. <laughs> and I want to preach at least 12 times a month. God, I want to go around the world. And I didn't get it then, but I heard him say, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, and I'm, I'm like, well, yeah, kind of. I thought I was, but... See, you've got to remember that anything you pray for is going to be something you're going to have to take care of. Here they were. They were no longer excited about the manna. They were the people that saw God part the Red Sea. But here they were complaining. <laughs> they were the people that got water out of a rock. And here they were complaining. You know why? Why, 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 why? Because the natural nature of human flesh if it is not disciplined and controlled by the Holy Spirit will always drift. toward the negative. It will all, you don't have to try to complain, but you'll have to try to have a thankful, grateful attitude. We don't even have to try to be grouchy, but we do have to try to be nice and sweet. <laughs> Numbers 14. Verse 1. <laughs> And all the congregation cried out with a loud voice, and they wept all night. They did a lot of crying, didn't they? <laughs> and all the Israelites grumbled and hated their situation, accusing Moses and Aaron. <laughs> the blame game, it got started in the garden, never has stopped. To whom the whole congregation said, well, we just wish we would have died in Egypt. Or we, <laughs> or we just wish we would have died out here in this wilderness. Why does the Lord bring us to this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and little ones are going to be a prey. Would it just not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us choose a captain and go back to Egypt. Now watch what happened. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of Israelites. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among the scouts, who'd searched out the land, ripped their clothes. That was their way of showing grief. It was almost like Moses was saying, my God, we've got to get down here and pray and close this door that these people have opened through their grumbling, fault finding, and complaining. You see, there's something that I want to try to get across to you today and get a fresh lesson myself, because I can tell you, I did a little complaining last week. I repented real quick, but I want to get to the point where I don't do it. We have nothing to complain about. We have nothing to murmur about, nothing to gripe about. So I want to get a fresh lesson today too. Complaining is sin. Amen. <laughs> You're not doing it by faith, are you? Whatever's not of faith is sin. 
And it opens the door for the devil. Complaining actually opens a door for the devil. The word complain, I found this definition one time, it means to stay overnight. To remain and to stay overnight. So here they were in the wilderness trying to get to the promised land, but they kept complaining, 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 so they just kept getting to spend another night and another night and another night. And those other nights turned into 40 years of nights. And they never could get out of there because of murmuring and complaining about their situation. But you just don't know what I'm going through. You, need, you, you just don't know how hard it is. You just don't know. You, you know what? Honestly and truly, no matter how hard I have it or you have it, there is somebody else on this planet that's got it harder than we do. And not only that, there's probably somebody, no matter how hard you think you have it, there's probably somebody right here in this room today that's got it harder than you, but they've probably got a smile on their face and aren't complaining about anything. They ripped their clothes and Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and began to pray because they realized that the murmurings of the people was a serious situation. Now let's look at Numbers 14, verse 28. Maybe this will put a little fear of God in us. Tell them as I live, says the Lord, what you have said in my hearing, I will do to you. <laughs> How many of you see that? Okay. What you're saying, that's what I'm going to do to you. I wonder sometimes when we have a fresh situation that we're complaining about, that we have that situation to complain about because the last time we had a situation, we complained and actually spoke words that got us that new situation. <laughs> It's so important to learn it. It is not easy, but it is doable. God would not have told us to do it if we couldn't do it. It is so important to continue to speak positively in negative situations. And I'm not trying to carry this too far and say you can't tell people when you're hurting. I'm not saying that you can't tell people that you're going through a rough time. But I'll tell you what, we need to talk about that just a little bit and then say, but God. But God, I do believe sometimes we need to vent and we need to tell the truth about how we feel. But a lot of times we just need to go to God and tell him that. You know, David was very good about telling God exactly how he felt. But he didn't say too much of it to a bunch of other people. You know, I don't want people getting in agreement with me when I'm having a fit that I'm never going to get out of this. And, you know, you know how we are. Oh, nothing good ever happens to me. Nothing's ever going to change. And they're like, yeah, man, I know how you feel. Yes, yes, amen. When your friends get like that, don't agree with them. Tell them now, now, come on. Come on. We see the word thanks 116 times in the Bible. And 73 of those times it says to give thanks. So it's not good enough just to say, well, I'm a thankful person. How often are you opening your mouth and saying so? The Bible says, be thankful and say so. Say so. Not only to God, but to people. I think we need to be a lot more appreciative for even the little tiny things that people do for us. My husband is very, very gracious about doing a lot of little things for me, just like little things. And I'm trying to remember, even when he does those little things, not to take it for granted, but to, but to thank him for doing that. It helps build good relationships do you know some of you have got real relationship problems today and you came here believing God for a miracle, but I can tell you that if you will go home and just begin to be a little more thankful, you could turn that whole situation around. Instead of finding everything that you can find that you don't like, that isn't going the way you want it to, everything the person does you don't like, start looking for, even if you can only find one thing or even a half a thing, make a big deal out of that. What you focus on grows. If you focus on the positive, the positive will get bigger and bigger. If we focus on the negative, the negative gets bigger and bigger. Now I shared last night Philippians 2, 5. It says, let this same attitude and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Let this same attitude that Jesus had be in you. 
let this same humble mind that he had be in you. So humility is the foundation for every good attitude. The only reason why we complain is because we think that we deserve better treatment than what we're getting. And we think that of all the people on the planet, we are the last ones that should have to put up with any inconvenience. <laughs> and we forget, so I will remind us all today, that what we deserve <laughs> is to die and go to hell. <laughs> and to burn there for eternity. Hell is hot and forever is a long time. And I am grateful that Jesus has already purchased my way out. Amen. Isn't that true? Why else do we complain? When I complain, why do I complain? Why do I murmur? Why do I grumble? Because I think that I am far too important to have to put up with this inconvenience. Now, we don't consciously think that stuff, but isn't that really what's at the bottom of it? Well, I just don't understand why this is happening to me. It's okay if it happens to everybody else and we think they should cheer up and... <laughs> Come on. Well, you know, brother, now just cheer up, you know. <laughs> All things work together for good. Just cheer up. Get a smile on your face. But then when it's over, well, I don't understand why this is happening to wonderful me. <laughs> so humility has to be the foundation a very good attitude. Andrew Murray has written a great book just called Humility. If you'd like to read a good book on humility, he's a man that went home to be with the Lord a good number of years ago, but I've read just all kinds of his books. And this little book on humility, I probably read it at least once a year. And I'm in the process of rereading it again right now because humility is the hardest of all the virtues to come by. It is the most difficult. Because pride is just crammed into every fiber of our flesh. And I want to have a good attitude because I believe a good attitude is what glorifies God. So therefore, I know that I have to try to maintain some level of humility. Let's talk about spiritual warfare. How many of you get really fed up with the devil walking all over you and you're just like, I want to learn how to defeat him. And I want to learn how to do it the easy way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you, this is going to be Spiritual Warfare 101. Spiritual Warfare the easy way. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 and 19. I've already quoted it, but I want us to look at it. Thank God in everything. No matter what the circumstances might be. Be thankful and give thanks. Be thankful and give thanks. Be thankful and give thanks. <laughs> For this is the will of God. You know, so many people want to know what God's will is. And something he put on my heart probably 30 years ago is before people work too hard at trying to find out what my specific will is for them, like, you know, what their ministry call is or who they're supposed to marry or what their spiritual gift is or those kind of things we get all concerned about. We just need to, to work with the Holy Spirit at fulfilling the general will of God. The first thing we could start with is learning how to be thankful. Amen? Amen. And you can develop an attitude of gratitude. And I certainly don't mean that I don't have a long way to go because I do, but I've sure come a long way too. Sure. And I used to be so negative and so grouchy. And I mean, I could find something wrong with everything. I grew up in a very negative atmosphere and it just kind of got off on me. But I tell you now, I don't even know how many times a day I say, thank you, God. I don't, e I don't even know. And I don't even know what I'm thanking him for. It's just, thank you, God. I mean, I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When I leave here today, I'll be in the car. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we need to develop that attitude of what do we have if God doesn't help us? What are we except for the grace of God? What are we except for God's goodness in our lives? We're nothing 
absolutely nothing. We deserve nothing. And every good thing that happens to us is a gift from God. And we need to celebrate God's goodness. Matter of fact, I want to I want to just encourage you maybe to think about having a thank you party once a year. Seriously. You know they had those parties all the time in the Bible. You know every time they had a victory, God commanded them to have a feast and a celebration. It was a command. And, and they would have a victory, they'd fight a battle and have a victory. And then they would spend a number of days, a week just having a big party. Just thanking God for the victory. They didn't just take the goodness of God and then run off to the next thing. They took a long time to thank God. And part of the way they thanked Him was through celebrating and through sending gifts to the poor. I think that's beautiful. When Esther and the Jewish people had such a victory from wicked Haman who wanted to kill them, and when they saw the deliverance of God, God commanded them to have a festival at the same time every year to remember what he had done for them. And the Bible says, and they also were commanded by God to send portions of what they had to the poor and the needy. One of the ways that we celebrate the goodness of God in our lives is through our giving to other people who don't have what we have. And I can tell you the truth, I think if you're stingy and won't give, then you're not thankful. Now well, that went over good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm excited. I mean, isn't it the truth? We need to do more celebrating. We really need to celebrate the victories that God gives us. Thank God in everything. Thank God in everything. Don't go to lunch with somebody today and just spend the whole lunch time just telling them all your problems. You can take time to do that, but then remember what God has done. Recall, recount, remember the good things that God has done in your life. Remember the Red Seas that He's parted. Remember the manna. Remember the water that's come out of the rock. Remember the stones that He rolled out of the way and the resurrections that you've had. Let's take time to remember those things and let's talk about those things. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances might be. Be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 19, I love this. Do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. So what is that telling me? When I complain, I stop, or quench, or hinder, or halt the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. But if I'm going to be praying and asking God to help me with my situation, and then I'm going to be complaining about the very thing that I say I'm trusting God to deliver me from, then I pray and I open the door for Him to work. I complain and I shut the door in His face. I open the door for the Holy Spirit, then I quench the Holy Spirit. And this is important stuff. Well, what did Joyce teach on day? Well, she just told us to be positive and have a good attitude and be thankful. <laughs> No, I'm talking to you about high-tech spiritual warfare. I'm talking to you about putting the devil in his place and keeping him there, which is under your foot. Now, I'm not telling you this is going to be easy on your flesh because there are going to be things happen to you that are going to seem so unfair and so not right, and it's going to seem to take so much longer for your deliverance than what you think it should take. But if you can just keep saying, I believe that this is going to work out for my good. God, I don't know how you're going to pull this off, but this is going to work out for my good. Some way, somehow, you are going to take this tragic situation and you are going to work it out for my good. So God, as hard as it is for me to say it, I'm going to thank you right in the midst of it because even though I don't see it or feel it, I know that you're working something good out of this. Can we believe that today? All things, all things, all things work together for good. If you have a bad situation, all you do is make it worse by complaining. 
You know, the Apostle Paul maintained such a great attitude that we have some really good examples of people in the Bible who just had great attitudes. I mean, Daniel had a great attitude. He had been told if he continued to pray to his God that he was going to be put into a den full of lions. And the Bible says that Daniel continued as was his habit to go into his upper chamber and open his windows and bow down and pray and give thanks to God three times a day. I wonder what would happen when we've been threatened by the enemy. Well, you just wait and see what happens to you. You just wait. Daniel was threatened with the lion's den. But he continued to pray and give thanks to God. What would happen if we all took just that moment, those two moments, three times a day? What would happen if before you left the house in the morning, you just took a moment and bowed down and said, God, I just want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for helping me. I believe I can do whatever I need to do today through Christ who strengthens me. I'd like everything to be good and work out the way I'd like it to, but God, if it don't, I know you're with me and it will work out good eventually. What would happen if at noon, in addition to having a little sandwich, you'd go somewhere and bow down for a minute and say, God, I just want to thank you for getting me through the first half of this day. And I'm so grateful, God, that you're working in me and you're going to... And then again in the evening or at night, Daniel kept getting promoted and promoted and promoted. He wore out three kings and kept being promoted and promoted and promoted. I don't think we can even begin to know what God could do for us if we'll just hook up and have a godly attitude. Ruth had a good attitude. Esther had a good attitude. You don't, you don't see people in the Bible for very long that didn't have a good attitude. They're there for a couple of pages and then they disappear. <laughs> right? It's amazing. The people, it's like, what happened to that guy? How many of you want to be one of the ones that stay in the story? I want to stay in the story. I don't want to just be there for a page or two and disappear. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. Paul just seemed to turn everything around. For we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about the affliction and the oppressing distress you get it? Affliction, oppressing distress, <laughs> which befell us in the province of Asia. How we were so utterly and unbearably weighed down and crushed that we despaired even of life itself. <laughs> Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death, but that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on ourselves instead of on God who raises the dead. So we see how Paul's turned this situation around. He's saying, you know, I, I don't know what God's up to, but one thing I do see that's good out of this already, it sure put me back in my place, and I've got a fresh dose of humility, and now I know more than ever that I can't do this on my own, that I need God. So Paul said, I don't really understand why this has taken place. We're hurting so bad that we just feel like we've received the sentence of death. But one thing it has done, here's one good thing I see already. It is sure keeping me from trusting in myself. There's so many wonderful stories in the Bible about how Thanksgiving delivered people. In Chronicles we see, Second Chronicles we see Jehoshaphat being attacked by three different armies at one time. Three different brand of ites. The Bible says his first impulse was to fear. But then his, the second thing he did was he set himself determinedly to seek God. And he called a fast. And as God began to speak to them, God said, this battle is not yours, but it's mine. And then he said, take your position, stand still, and you'll see the deliverance of the Lord. And his position was he bowed down in worship. That was, take your position. He bowed down in worship. And a certain day came, the day for the battle, and the Bible says that Jehoshaphat appointed singers to sing. I, what a battle. Okay, I want this side of the building to sing. <laughs> and we're all going to get on our face and pray. <laughs> 
Just think about it. Three armies coming. Three armies coming at one time. Somebody in this building today has got three problems, I know. At least three. You've got three different enemies coming against you at one time. Sometimes we just don't get one enemy at once. Sometimes we get more than one at one time. Take your position, stand still, see the deliverance of the Lord. Get on your face and pray and do some singing. And on the day of the battle, these singers went out, Jehoshaphat on the ground praying, and the singers went out, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Three armies, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says that the enemy got so confused that they killed each other. Come on, you want to confuse hell? You want to stir up something in hell today? You just start saying, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Well, I believe that a thankful attitude is one of the most beautiful attitudes that we can have. And I believe it pretty much guarantees us that we're going to have a powerful, victorious life. You know, I just want to encourage you today, no matter how messy your mess is, if you keep a good attitude, God will work good out of it. Romans 8, 28 tells us that, that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. You know, we always love to offer you the Word of God. I feel so strongly about the Word of God. And today we're offering a six CD series called Attitudes of the Heart. You don't want to miss this one. This is really going to help you. Need a change in your life? Maybe all you need is a change in your outlook. Attitudes of the Heart, a six-part series by Joyce Meyer, will help you discover the power of a positive attitude and help you experience a life more fulfilling than you could have ever imagined. Begin building a foundation for success today when you request Joyce's six-part audio teaching series on Attitudes of the Heart with a donation of $30 or more. Call toll-free 1-800-727-9673 or visit JoyceMeyer.org. Started when I applied for uh, medical school, uh, you know, I was having such a difficulty and, and I promised God that uh, if I made it, I would uh, give my profession to his service, to his kingdom. And I guess uh, he remembered, <laughs> you know, hopefully that uh, we, could, we could talk to their uh, faith also and uh, bring them closer to the Father. I think that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Discover the five everyday choices that change Joyce and will change you forever. Get five CDs, five DVDs, and a book of personal stories from Joyce, packaged together in Conversations with Joyce Meyer. Available on our website, JoyceMeyer.org. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.